I didn't like to see him out the door. Why? She gets nervous about tradespeople. That's fucking bang out of order. What about me? What? She, mate, if you turned up at our house, she'd be freaked right out. It wasn't you. Like, if she didn't know who you were. Yeah, but why? She has freaked out at trees. She, no, she... Because it's funny because she just is... just strangers. Like she, yeah, it's just strangers. Like, oh, okay. strangers in the But house. that's a bit judgmental from her perspective because that's what I'm saying. What about me? I'm a nice enough fella. I would but never do anything like, like that, but she would hard. judge me. You look like a white jihadist, so I wouldn't be that... Well, oh, yeah, but I wouldn't show that. I wouldn't walk in to someone's house and be like, Alu Akbar! Hello, hello, one and all, and welcome back to another episode of the greatest podcast on planet Earth, Goats. The show where we aim to find the very best in every category that we can muster. As always, I'm joined in the virtual studio by Mork and Sebek. Hello to the both of you. But before we get into the niceties, I just want to quickly say that if you like our podcast and if you'd like to support it, then why don't you head on, head on down to our Instagram at the underscore goats underscore pod or even just give us a cheeky little five-star review on your podcast listening platform of choice. And if you want to take it a little step further, we also have a Patreon. Right, now that's out of the way, how are we doing? Not too bad. Very good, very cold. It's freezing, in it? I've got a blanket over me like an old woman. I've got a little heater underneath my desk. Very cold in my garage. <laughs> Who would have thought, eh? Wife's kicked you out. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought it wouldn't be fucking freezing in it? <laughs> yeah, I need to get ventilation in there. Get some carpets or some shit. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> shit, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good. Right. Seb, how are you? I'm all right, mate. Um, yeah, just, just, just life. Just life carries on. The endless turning cogs of life just motor on. And, you know, you either keep up or get crushed. So Yeah. You've right. definitely got more boring, though, Seb, because I, I, like I said last week, I think I've been listening to some of the old episodes, and, like, back in the day, you were like, every week, you were like, oh, I've got a fucking mad one today, lads, right? Yeah. Basically, this, like, this, like, German spy kidnapped me and, like, sent me to the moon and that. And we were like, whoa. <laughs> the thing is, I think interesting. And you're like, oh, I was driving down the road the other day in a car on a backflip. Whoa. Something did happen this week, but I can't remember what it was. You guys went to some sort of cabin in the woods. Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! yeah that's oh yeah! I did, did a that. fucking rope swing. That was sick. Um, oh yeah, I did make a rope swing. That was got sick. Got stuck in a tree. That was sick. Broke um, your phone. That was cool. Broke my phone. That was sick. Mm. Oh, did you? Um, but something happened. There definitely something weird happened. What I meant to tell you. <clears throat> While he thinks of any, anything interesting happen in your life? Yeah, I bought a bought a big big old TV. Got a big old did TV you? up there now. Yeah, and. Nice. Equipped with a brand new sound system, so next Whoa. time we're over, going to be entertainment Fucking through the max. How that's big is it? How are we talk? How many inches? I think it's forty-nine inch. Oh, that's Which a good inch. Nine. It's big for me, but probably not for <laughs> the listeners. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's all Vinny what? can handle is forty-nine what? inches. What? That's an interesting size. It normally goes up in multiples of five. Forty-nine is a nah, because we know because isn't it normally like mine's like a. Yeah, it mine's like a forty nine or maybe a fifty nine. I can't remember. What what brand are we talking? LG. Oh, all nice. They do good panels. Good they strong brand. Panels. Yeah, I got it second hand for forty quid because my friends, nice. my friends were like, "Well, we we don't want it because we bought a new TV, and it, if you just swing us forty quid, you can take it home with you." And I was like, "Yes, please." Sweet. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah. It's like twice the size of the old TV. It's fucking huge compared it's to mad. the old one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that album was small, actually, yeah. Me and Luke got a new telly recently. Got it, I got it for 50. Um, but it has, like, it's not quite OLED. It's called, like, local array dimming, where, like, it's the black is is pretty much black. It's not, like, perfectly black. But if you, like, mm. have a black screen, if you turn it on and then set it to a black screen and put your hands over it like that and look at it, it looks like it's not on. Like, it's like there's no light coming off of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just fucking insane. We watched Planet Earth in 4K on it. And it, I felt like a caveman. I was just <laughs> like, what? Turn all like, the lights off, yeah. I was like freaking out. Like, it just blew my mind. <laughs> 
Nice. Anyway, nice, there was nice. that. Right, cool. Shall we get into it. Yeah. Let's talk about dick takers. Let's talk about dick takers. Yes, thank you. So, a ruler with total power over a country, typically one who has obtained control by force. Now, that is the Oxford language's definition of a dictator. And as you all know, the vast, vast majority of people who have been labeled as dictators throughout the history, throughout our history, pretty much objectively terrible people that did objectively <laughs> terrible things i mean the word is synonymous with tyrant for yeah. good reason but as you probably haven't yeah as you probably have noticed this isn't a wotes episode we're not talking about the worst we're not talking about the shit stuff we're talking about the best stuff this is good old classic coke this is classic goats <laughs> so today we're going to shine a light on the people throughout history. Can you tell I wrote this light 10 minutes ago? So we're going <laughs> to So so we're going to shine a light on the people throughout history who can be considered a dictator, but without all the really nasty horrible connotations that normally come along with such a title. Now I'm not going to lie that list is pretty small and you could quite easily make the argument that even the good ones did a lot of bad stuff i.e. Mm. war but mm. bit of war but what's wrong with a bit of war but despite that today we are going to look to crown who is the very greatest dictator of them all who stands upon the throne of uh, mangled corpses of uh, mm-hmm. robert mugabe and mm-hmm. pol pot <laughs> and other robert, such can't dictators. pick robert mugabe I picked Robert Mugabe. Man. You can't pick Robert Mugabe. That's my go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I would get in with the connection, like just try and win through like nepotism of like, yeah, but, you know, you're from Zimbabwe, Mugabe, like I would win that way. But then Mugabe literally like took Vinny's life away from him. So nah, nah, nah. Vinny's cool. I've seen pic- I've seen a picture of them two smoking a spliff together. I've was... seen a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was. So, <laughs> I was it's very think- grainy black and white, and there's an alien in there, but I presume it's real. Yeah, the 80s are a wild time, man. A lot of coke. I was <laughs> really tempted because this is episode 79, and I realized, oh, 79, that's, you know, when Zimbabwe gained its independence from the British Empire. And I was going to be like, oh, to celebrate Robert Mugabe leading the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't. Nah, I can't make that connection. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, um, greatest dictator, I want to hear it. I want to hear who wants Me. to go first. I do. Mork's Mork. going first, just by Mork's fucking ready. being fucking so fucking... I'm, I'm fired up. I'm actually so happy for you to go first. Why? Okay, Sebek, so you're going first now. No. <laughs> now you're both unhappy. <laughs> right. Shall I start? Go for it, mate. Well, I was actually going to do a little bit here. Go for it. Well, I, f- I like f- I faked that I'd actually pick Sasha Baron Cohen's character from the movie The Dictator as the guy. I think his name's General Aladdin or something like that. Yeah. Um, I was gonna do like this whole funny thing and all this stuff, but I when I was researching my actual pick, I thought actually, you know what? To to do that would just be completely disrespectful to the to the person I've picked. So. I just scrapped it because I wanted to be fully respectful to this geezer because he's a fucking beast. And the person that I've picked is he's without a doubt one of the greatest historical figures of all time. Like, no question. Mm. And I actually didn't really know fuck all about him, to be fair, before doing this. But damn, this this guy is nuts. Like, he is nuts. His life story is one of the craziest I've ever, ever known. And... Right. Most great historical figures and rulers, especially like big rulers, are born from wealth or they're given the right to rule by God or it's been passed down to them by this and this and this and all this other crazy shit. Mm -hmm. But our story today actually starts off very differently on a tiny impoverished island called Corsica. And the year after Corsica was invaded by and became part of of France, a petit boy was born, who was actually technically average height for the time, but a petit boy was born. Was he born? His name is, editor, put the fucking trumpets in here or something. 
Napoleon of Bonaparte. Bonaparte. And... Is that right? Is that also the right pronunciation? Bonaparte. I think it is. I thought it was it? Bonaparte. Hey, Bonaparte. Well, Napoleon is his name, though. That's all we Bonaparte. need to know is his name's fucking Napoleon. <laughs> and I just want to say that before we really get into this, right? Don't crucify me if I get some of this shit wrong, okay? Because... Like, the story of this guy is fucking mad, and it's really deep, and it's, like, even debated to this day, like, a lot of the shit. Like, so, I I've only just <laughs> found out about this shit, so if I do get things wrong, just fucking don't kill me, okay? <laughs> I'll try and do him justice. Um, so, yeah, Napoleon. He grew up in Corsica, um, which is, like, a shitty little island off the coast of Italy, mm -hmm. and his parents wanted the best for him. They were like, oh, well, we want our little, like, a little gremlin. We want him to be you know, have the best life possible. So they shipped him off to military school in France. And he did pretty well at school, actually. But he would spend a lot of his time at school just alone and reading about great conquerors and rulers like Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great. And he really admired them for their ambition and their ability to just rule single-handedly. And then he passed out of military school at age 16 and he became a second lieutenant which sounds good, sounds pretty high rank, but it's actually a junior officer and it's like the bottom of the ladder. And Napoleon wasn't satisfied with this. He was like, fuck this. I want more. I want to be the best. I want to, I've got, like, he just had so much, he was just full of shitloads of ambition. He wanted to rise to the level. But he was like, wasn't it was pretty hard to come by because all of the promotional like ranks and everything else were all given out based on like social social status like who you knew what, yeah. what nobility you came from all this despite <clears throat> any skills so napoleon was always rejected even though he was a brilliant you know military mind a lot of nepotism yeah absolutely yeah exactly yeah they're all like oh your father's like senso so you can be fucking general of this army that's and like i feel like kind of stuff. the majority of like <sighs> european history like military european history is just like it is just all connections pretty much yeah like, oh yeah absolutely just family friends of family friends of friends of family stuff like that and it was all like that in like the rulers like the monarchs they're all you know that's how a monarchy runs basically oh, well, you're the son of this guy so you can rule monarchy's inherited like that's purely purely supposed to be yeah. nepotism but yeah, yeah exactly but luckily for napoleon all of this was about to change with the French Revolution, baby. Let's go, my head. They started kicking off, and they were like, "Fuck this nepotism shit. Fuck the king. Like, let's get rid of all this shit." Yes. And I'm not really gonna go into the French Revolution, although I think this might have been the first revolution. Or there's been, I, I realized there's actually been like, there's been like ten French revolutions in a shit. There's been so the French many. Revolution. I think that's quite important. No, I can't. <laughs> there's his own whole thing and like I said there's been loads yeah but that was huge it kickstarted a lot of the revolutions including the yeah United. they basically wanted to stop all this shit like stop all the nobility and just like make people equal and everything else and Napoleon was like oh shit sweet so he used this opportunity to rise the ranks of the army and he just started defending the revolution because he did quite like their ideas of equality and everything else and he went and won some really significant battles for the army and eventually got promoted to general and he was given his own army as well to command so that's pretty good going napoleon he, he's sort of things are going sweet start from but nothing. now now he's a general start from nothing he started on a shitty island in corsica now he's a general with his own army he's got his own army someone remix that into the drake song <laughs> start well, from the mate, bottom now we've Jake's got our own army <laughs> napoleon is the bottom true of definition corsica, of start yeah. from the bottom <laughs> How the fuck did we get here, basically? But but anyway, right. French Revolution's going on, and there's a lot of big tensions in Europe at this point, right? Mm -hmm. And France thought it would be a good, great idea to spread their revolutionary ideas and declare war on most of Europe, i.e. Austria, Prussia, Russia, Britain, basically every, fucking everybody. And this is where Napoleon would get his first chance to lead his very own military campaign and start showing the signs of why he was probably, I can say almost definitely, the greatest military leader in history. Big France. Thing. Okay. He's probably the greatest military mind 
like a leader of an army in history. He's probably the greatest military mind in history. Didn't Alexander the Great conquer like most of the known worlds? I mean, he yeah, didn't conquer did he... Asia. But I guess is that the known world at that point? If you're European, I don't know. Also, did he do it like leading from the front with his fucking sword out? I don't know. But anyway, I think he did. And before he was 32, I think as well. Never mind. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Sorry, carry on. Anyway, <laughs> so France was trying to knock Austria out of the war. So they sent their two main armies north to meet them head on. And then they sent Napoleon because he's like a little gremlin and they're a bit like, oh, whatever, Napoleon. You take your army south and just go through Italy and they thought, oh, that'll just like, you know, carry on, whatever. However, they were struggling up in the north and no one knew yet how much of a genius Napoleon was. While the armies in the north kept being pushed back by the Austrians, Napoleon rallied his his demoralized men with rousing speeches he would get down in the actual mud himself firing and aiming cannons by himself to show the guys what to do and he would inspire them to lead almost suicidal charges on the enemy wow can i just ask something go can we all just clap at the same time for no reason what's three two one I realised I'd been recording my webcam microphone for the start bit, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. But I, um, I've swapped my good microphone now. But we had to clap so that we could sing. Right. Together. Cool. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Nice. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. But here we are. We can just. That's, it's that's it's fine. You haven't talked too much, so. Yeah, you haven't talked too much. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> um. <laughs> only the most professional here at goats. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's got markedly less professional over the last couple of weeks. We need to bring the quality back up. <laughs> it's all been me as well. It's all been my problem. It's all been you, Seb. It's your fault. But anyway, he also created a signature tactical move here in the this wang in this campaign. No, he would split up his armies into smaller subsections, thus dividing his enemies, and then conquering them one at a time and then regrouping divide and conquer it was kind of this new idea of like splitting his guys up into smaller men and fighting mini battles and so he had uh, he was very very successful in this military campaign he absolutely tore through italy and europe he sent a shitload of money back to france so they were fucking buzzing mm. and he single-handedly marched all the way through to vienna and oversaw them he forced them to sign a peace treaty he oversaw the negotiations hit by himself knocking austria out of the war and he had done all this and he's only 28 years old mm. it's pretty impressive first campaign as well yeah, he returned to France an absolute fucking hero. Nobody knew he was going to do that. Like, they, they thought, oh, no, he'll just get on with whatever. And he turns out, he just, like, rings him up and it's like, boys, I've made them fucking surrender. And they're like, what? <laughs> so he goes back to France a hero. Everybody fucking loves him. Um, and he's great. But I'm going to have to skip a little bit of stuff just now because mm -hmm. otherwise it's really long. Yeah, I was about to say, you're halfway shit. through and he still isn't actually a dictator just yet. He's still a general, no, no. so... Well, that's right. I'm halfway through it. I'm roughly halfway through my script, okay, so that's okay, good. Okay, cool. But he was basically sent out to Egypt because the government was scared that he was getting too much praise and they, he might try and overthrow them. And obviously the revolution's going on and everything else. But after a bit of a bad time in the desert, he returned to France where... A politician came up to him and was like, hey, Napoleon, everyone fucking loves you. Everyone hates the government. Let's stage a coup. Like, what do you reckon, dude? I reckon you can fucking do it. So they did. <laughs> then Napoleon and his army stormed into the government buildings and were like, right, you lot fuck off. I'm in charge now. And after some initial confusion, I think Napoleon's brother came in and was like, whoa, whoa, let's just calm this all down. Make Napoleon the ruler. And so did some fucking jiggery-pokery with some, like, signature documents and napoleon basically managed to sign himself as the sole ruler of france and he was known as the first consul so he now technically is a dictator as he now has gone from general in the army to first consul of france he he is actually the ruler of france so wait wait sorry step walk th walk that th walk th sorry walk through that with me again so he how does he how does he get how does he basically become the leader of France like he signs some thing what he just stages a coup he sends coup, he sends right. his army into the government buildings okay kicks so, them all out 
says like, right, you lot fuck off. Him and this politician guy and another guy were like, right, we're going to write up a new constitution. But Napoleon wrote it really. They were supposed to split the power three ways. But because he like wrote it up, he basically made himself sole leader and sole ruler of okay. um, France. And he was known as the first consul and they were going to be the second and third consuls. But he basically consolidated all power to himself. Okay, okay. So he took it by So he's the... Yeah, exactly, yeah. So he's the ruler now. Then there was another war in Europe, which was the second war that Napoleon was a part of. And it started when he was in Egypt because Austria and like all the other lads, these all these wars are called wars of the coalition because it was a coalition of armies like Austria and everyone else against France at the time. So yeah, they were thought, oh, because Napoleon's fucked off to Egypt, let's like take our land back. So they were like fighting and doing everything else while Napoleon was in Egypt. But because he's a fucking rascal, he returned as a ruler and then was just like, right, fuck you, Zlot, I'm going to war. I'm the ruler of the whole country now. Let's go to war. So he fucked them up and he won the second war. <laughs> so just nice. absolutely obliterated everybody. <laughs> Stormed into Vienna again, slapped the Austrian king around the face, said, don't fucking do, do this shit. <laughs> and now there's peace in Europe. Napoleon's like, gone to war for the second time, won, and now there's peace. And he's only 30. Hmm. Crazy. So obviously he's one of the greatest mili- military leaders of all time. But now it's peacetime. Now it's peacetime. Could he lead France? Not mm. just lead an army. Could he lead a country? Well, yeah, he did actually. And he built on the ideas of the revolution, and he made France better. He improved their economy and banking systems. Gave them centralized banking. He made equality a massive thing. He changed education to be based solely on like individual talent and skill and everything else rather than fucking nepotism uh he changed the infrastructure and he even brought back the church because he thought oh it'd be good if like you know all the poor people have got like the church to fall back on so they don't like overthrow me again and like he was quite big on religious freedom as well he was very nice to the jewish people but only under like strict circumstance like the church weren't allowed to have too much power and start saying gods were uh, kings were down from god and all this other shit um so what didn't he yeah. didn't he didn't he also regress uh women's rights by a few decades as well wasn't that one he did things? a little bit yeah he took yeah. some t- i thought you for just all said the sometimes good, maybe good sometimes oh. maybe bad he <laughs> took away a little bit of women's rights but he did make france way better in general you just said he did a bit of equality was that he not did a bit of equality. What, what what equality are we talking then well, he like took land from the rich people and like gave it to the oh, poor people. Like, and, like, like, like classes and stuff. He made the class system rather than like a pyramid, yeah. But then he was like, oh, you know, like I didn't get into all this stuff, but it was like, oh, ladies, basically like technically your husband like owns you and shit like yeah. that, you know. But that was classic. <laughs> yeah. That was classic 1800 ideology. That was going to be there regardless. If he went right full on, give women the vote and everything else, that would that would have been even more impressive. That would have been like 200 years ahead of the time, but... But you didn't. You know, here we are. <laughs> but you didn't. <laughs> you can't be perfect. <laughs> no, I, 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 Napoleon did a lot of very good things for France. But yeah. Yeah. You, I think I feel like it's fair to mention the bad stuff he did in. Yeah. In yeah. That's that's stuff. the that's the one big criticism that's leveled at him when he sort of started yeah. making laws and shit. He is a very like he's a definition of impressive. He's a very impressive man. Mm. Like, oh yeah, like he's, he's fucking. Like, if he could do anything, if he if he decided to fly to the moon in 1850, in like 1805, he'd have, he'd have done it. Like anything he said, he was like, "I'm going to do this." He just did it. He was like mad at that. Also, that um, sorry, sorry to bring it back again, but that whole he invented divide the, the dividing into smaller groups and then doing sort of one on ones. Well, I don't know if he he probably didn't actually invent it, but at the time, military tactics at the time that was a new thing. But like how you know military tactics have been going for thousands and thousands yeah. of years the romans could have done that but then that technique's been lost to time but at the time yeah. of war within europe like that people weren't doing that he was splitting up into little groups and having so much success by doing doing that kind of stuff basically some guy in vienna would be just sat there talking to his mates and i think he'd just go Ba-dung! and he'd say like 1v1 me on rust lol you'd one be one everyone in the austrian kingdom just (laughs) (laughs) on rust the volume would batter him he's fucking you imagine you're sat there you think you're the big shit and then you get a message from napoleon that just says rust snipers only like yeah you would be like do you would not accept that invitation (laughs) for snipers only napoleon (laughs) um cannons only but yeah so he's (laughs) 
he sorted France out and he officially declared the revolution finished, saying, I am the revolution. And the new France was born. However, at this time, things did start to get a little bit tense because there were some assassination attempts against Napoleon. And so he realized, look, I can't really rule properly just being the first consul. Like, what does the first consul mean? France needs to become more powerful. It needs to become an empire. And I, Napoleon, need to be the emperor. So he just did make himself emperor. <laughs> he, he basically, he got the Pope in. He had a special ceremony in Notre Dame. And like, normally in these things, like you're, the Pope's supposed to like put the crown on you and crown you as the emperor. But this was Napoleon's biggest dick swinging moment of his life. Instead of having the Pope put the crown on Napoleon, Napoleon stood up himself and put the crown on himself, <laughs> officially <laughs> making himself the emperor. That is fucking <laughs> sick, fam. Well, that is, that is cool. so cool. That's like he's it's just, like so unbelievably all... arrogant, but at the same time, kind of really cool. So to do it in front cool. of the Pope, and I... like fuck you, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm he's bigger like, than you. Off. I'm bigger Ooh. than religion. I'm bigger than Jesus. Yeah, like he's already gone in and declared himself ruler. Now he's just like, you know what? I'm the fucking emperor, son. <laughs> now he just is the emperor. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, he's the emperor now, uh, which is mad. Oh, and he's only 35. Four minutes, okay. Got a little bit left to go, but still. Yeah, yeah, you good. Um, <clears throat> he's gone from some, at 35 years old, he's gone from some random kid born on an island to the emperor of France. Crazy. But now, yes. the rest of Europe, and especially Britain, they didn't like this one bit, because they were like, Napoleon's a fucking menace. He's been warring for like a decade he's been kicking the shit out of everyone now he's the emperor of france what the fuck how who is this guy and so napoleon went to war again <laughs> and <laughs> it was just like oh, i don't like it war and so <laughs> with his incredible military tactics and leading from the front even though he's the emperor he's still at the front on his horse with a sword in you know in the battlefield he uh he won he wiped the floor with europe th for a third time um, he invented the corpse system into the French army by splitting the entire army into smaller subsections, different corps, which is something oh. the British army has now, the rifles wow. corps, the artillery corps, and gave each different corps its own subsection of artillery and riflemen and everything else. Um, that way they could like move faster, they could get through the ground really, really quickly, and they could fight on more fronts and they could ultimately just take over. Um, he obviously went into Austria and he gave them another spanking and he made the Austrian king promise never to fuck with him again on this this time. He's like, never go to war with me again. I'll do you I'll I'll do you for mate if you do. Um so yeah, it was mad, and the French Empire was just taking over a huge amount of land in Europe, and Napoleon's just won his third war against the coalition. Now, over the next decade there would be three or four more major coalition wars because it would constantly be a little bit of peace and then Britain and Austria get together and they're like, we've got to stop Napoleon. And he'd be like, right, fuck you, start and go to war. And he won them all, pretty much. The Peninsula War went a little bit bad, but we'll, we'll talk about that later maybe. But all the wars that occurred, he just started smashing the shit out of everybody. He's been warring for decades and Is decades. that where they committed loads of like a... Is that, is, that, is that the Peninsula War where they committed loads of atrocities because it was basically like a very early version of guerrilla warfare, like where... The yes. enemy would be hiding amongst like the the villages and whatnot, so people. Yeah, that's why he wasn't like, very successful was within I, Spain. Yeah, 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 within Spain and Portugal. But we'll get onto that because he starts smashing all these guys. But what he's really doing is he's pissing off the rest of Europe really, really badly, yeah. and so much so that that when the Sixth Coalition came around, everyone banded together to stop this one dude. Prussia joined with Austria, Sweden, Russia, Great Britain, Spain, and Portugal. Um, he had turned some of his allies against him, particularly Spain, with the uh, Peninsula War, because he basically walked in there and went, right, I know we're mates, but we own you now. Oh, and by the way, my brother's officially the king now. Like, not your king. Like, it's going to be my brother, so fuck you guys. And they didn't really like it. Revolution, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But it just shows how big fucking Napoleon's dick is just to go in and be like, my brother's the king now, you suck fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the combined armies of Europe, I might need a few more minutes, the combined armies of Europe gave it one more go. They were like, right, we can finally stop Napoleon. 
And this time they had a brilliant new tactic. They were going to run away. See, Napoleon was so good at war, he won virtually every single battle he felt. The enemies knew that the only way to beat him was just to run away. And by running away, Napoleon's army would sp spread thinner and thinner and thinner. And then they could turn back around and try their best to attack him from multiple fronts. Mm. And it did actually work. After years of fighting and lots of Napoleon victories, eventually the coalition did manage to push him back when he invaded Russia. And they actually managed to storm into France and they forced Napoleon to abdicate because he knew his time was up. They took over Paris and he was basically fucked. And they reinstated the old king's brother to be the king of France and they sent Napoleon away in exile to the small island of Elba. And that was it. He was no longer emperor of France. He was emperor of this shitty little island. And he was bored of that because this island sucked. He did improve their infrastructure and all the great stuff he did in France over there. But he was like, this fucking sucks. He ruined women's rights while he's at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to like the 20 but women he, who live on this tiny island. <laughs> yeah. But he was really bored over there. And mm. so one day he was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't need to do this. I'm Napoleon. He got on a boat and he sailed back to France. <laughs> and he sailed back to France with the intention of storming into Paris and taking back what was rightfully his, mm. the emperorship. And the king heard about this and he was like, fuck it, now Napoleon's back. The guy's like, yeah, yeah, he's coming. And he's like, well, I've got lo like shitloads of men. Send them to arrest them. So he sent thousands of men to go and arrest Napoleon. But when they saw Napoleon, they were like... Yo, what's up, car? Like, fuck the king. Yo, Napoleon, we're going to join you. And they even apparently threw him up in the air, chanting, Long live the emperor. And they turned onto Napoleon's side. The guys that were sent to arrest him turned to Napoleon's <laughs> side. Now Napoleon's mad. got his own army and starts <laughs> fucking storming to Paris. I mean, to be fair, I mean, fucking, why wouldn't you do that at that point? Napoleon's Ball's so big on this man. He's just like a yeah. legend. He's like a walking supervillain. And, um,. So the king fled. He was like, fuck this. He moved to Belgium. And Napoleon just walked straight into Paris and went, I am back. And that was it. He's done. <laughs> he's back badass, again. <laughs> um, so the rest of Europe thinks, right, he's gone. Then they hear that he's back and they are fuming. They are fucking fuming that Napoleon's back. They literally um, just got rid of him. So they declared another war. But not on France. They declared war on just Napoleon himself. They didn't give a shit about France, but they just wanted this bloke gone. So they started fighting, and the Allies, obviously, just straight away, like, well, right, right, we've got to invade France. Mm. But Napoleon wasn't going down that easy, despite not being in charge for very long. He met the British and the Prussian forces fucking head on in the north at the famous Battle of Waterloo. And he was very, very narrowly defeated. Luck played a big part on it. There's a lot of debate about whether he could have won that battle. Had he won that battle, he'd probably still be fucking ruling now. <laughs> but wasn't it like um, a brilliant, there's a big debate. Wasn't there like mm -hmm. a, just a brilliant sort of play by the British generals, right? Yeah, the British had some really good tactics. They dug in. They had to basically dig in for long enough for Prussia to join back the fight because Napoleon had pushed Prussia back and the British had to dig in for long enough for that. When they came back here and they could combine and beat him. Mm. So, yeah, it was a good good uh, fight from the British, but he was narrowly defeated. His only defeat, by the way. Ever. Right? Is that right? Waterloo was his only defeat? Or was that another oh, no, one? I think he lost a couple of little... Well, he, he failed to invade... Probably his, his only proper big defeat. Like, he failed to invade a lot of places, and he did kind of surrender in the first bit. But I guess maybe his only big defeat. Lose. How many battles did Napoleon lose? Oh, he lost seven. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know why I got just the one. Maybe it was just... Seven out of, like, eight something, isn't it? Sixty. <clears throat> Sixty, right. right. Yeah, Pretty yeah. fucking good. Pretty By himself good. as well. Right, it's actually <laughs> he's off scale. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it was over. He was done. Napoleon's actually fully done at this point. He's been captured, and Britain are like, right, we've got to make sure this never, ever, ever happens again. And so like a Bond villain, they put him on an island, another one. But this time, not an island near Europe. They put him on a tiny island called St. Helena, which is like thousands of miles off the coast of Africa. And to make sure he didn't fucking escape this time... They stationed 2,000 armed guards on the island and also had military naval ships circling the island 24-7. Mm. 
so that he couldn't get out. That's and yeah. yeah, so That's at the age of 46, it's over. He's gone from nothing to Emperor of France to nothing to Emperor of France again. Back to nothing. Napoleon was finished. And it took the combined efforts of basically every single major power in Europe to deal with this one kid who's just started from the bottom. Now we're here. Napoleon died a few years later in at the age of 51, probably because he was just going mad with boredom on this shitty little island. Didn't drove he him syphilis? In thing. He had stomach cancer. Stomach cancer, yeah. Yeah. Um, people think that the British sped up his death by like not feeding him properly and stuff like that. He just um, lived in like pretty squalid conditions towards. Yeah, the he end. lived in this shitty little wooden hut. I mean, really? it, like I said, he, he was he was like a Bond villain. They put him in like a prison island because he was such a terror. They knew if he gets out, he's going to take over Europe again. He's so good. What's well, the I... prison from fucking Harry Potter called? Azkaban. He's like Azkaban. Azkaban. It's basically Azkaban. Yeah. <laughs> what I think is so funny is the fact that. Well, they could have just killed him. Like they could have just executed yeah. him. But yeah, they did. They can't. But, but why, then it's why also that they? thing of like he's probably more powerful dead. Like if he dies, then suddenly all martyr. loads of people like he's rally to his cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think they. Yeah, they shouldn't have killed him. They I did the always, right thing. I remember. I think it was my dad because I remember asking my dad why didn't the British or whoever kill him when they had the chance, and he said that the. British generals just had such a deep respect for Napoleon. They were like, we're not going to kill him. We'll just let him live out the rest mm. of his days. Well, loads of them... Elsewhere. Yeah, loads of them learnt their military tactics from Napoleon during all those wars of the coalition, which mm. Napoleon may have been his own downfall because his tactics were so good that his enemies started to learn them and then use them kind of against him in a way. Mm. Um, but when he died, the British buried him inside a tin coffin, inside a mahogany coffin, inside a lead coffin, inside another mahogany coffin, just in case he tried to escape again. Even in death, they were fucking terrified of Napoleon. And I know this was really, really long, but Napoleon really is one of the greatest historical figures of all time, and he deserves he deserves the time on him. He's probably the greatest military tactician ever, certainly in modern history, maybe back thousands of years, but certainly in modern history, he's the greatest military tactician. His tactics are still studied in schools today, despite basically being irrelevant. He won almost every single battle he fought, and he led straight from the front in the fucking mud with the boys. He changed Europe and France forever. He was a great governor and ruler with brand new oh, diplomatic ideas. And all in this tiny, tiny space of time from humble beginnings. And the only way they could take him out was if every superpower in Europe went in for one bloke. Mm. Napoleon is the fucking goat, son. Mm. It went a little bit over there. Very much, yeah. very over, I will say. But I know, I, but I couldn't genuinely... Like, I skipped, I like, like seven fucking wars. Like, I couldn't... Yeah. <laughs> you you did, like, you I did skip a lot of wars. Of, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I like Napoleon so a lot, much. so I, I'm very happy listening to you talk about Napoleon. What I really like about, like... It, so... Whenever you go to France, you can still see the remnants of Napoleon. I mean, obviously, that you know, like you said, he was it like centralized the centralized banking and stuff, centralized yeah. banking and stuff. And obviously, that's huge. But the physical thing you can see, like pretty much, I think maybe everywhere in France, more or less, is the fact that he planted trees next to all of the major roads so that his soldiers marching through would have shade in the summer. And ah, right. you can still see it to this day that it's just all the roads in France, all the big roads in France have trees on the side and it's because of Napoleon. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was reading a thing yeah. where it was like, it was saying, there was an article saying like, does France still have a Napoleon complex? Like, do they still consider him like their God? Didn't he consider like, he was just gods as well at one point? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. He was just one bloke who basically ruled over Europe just by himself. Yeah. I think it's just, it's it's ridiculous like other dictators you've got like people like hitler and stuff like that but they they didn't really have i don't know they didn't have that aura like listening about napoleon now he's just he really is an emperor like and such a fucking did loads of good stuff but such a menace just for all the incredible warring he did and it wasn't like you know he wasn't doing it wasn't bad warring it was just warring off the time for one warred all the time in like the 17 1800s europeans love love a war back in those days they just loved having wars. so many any wars. squabble it's like fuck it war like, <laughs> it was war, like yeah. not a big deal so much it does war. it makes you think like we 
we're at a time where it feels like we either at a point where no one like that will come again because we're so connected and like it's much more difficult to like convince people of your like absolute authority Mm. but at the same time with social media and people's ability to like make a brand i know that sounds mad but he is like a brand like that's how he he did his thing like he 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 had like a cult of personality he was like more than himself he was a master of propaganda as well yeah like Like he published his own newspapers like when he came back from egypt it was a little bit of a failure but he just published all these newspapers say he was fucking brilliant and had all these paintings done and everyone was like oh napoleon's fucking sick (laughs) and like it makes you wonder like is there another one around the corner like i know some people would say oh trump came in as like such a populist and all that but like there's yet we we haven't had like a western dictator in the last like what 100 years well just under well, 100 years we haven't had a lot of conflict in europe for the past 100 Actually. years ever since no, World yeah. War II, people have sort of been a bit more chill you know? actually when did mussolini stop World War two oh no yeah, who was like the that's... guy who, who was the guy in spain um oh he never i don't think he he Pearl. kind of just, carried on being a dictator for quite a while until like the 60s yeah. and 70s i think oh yeah franco franco yeah franco oh, i tell a lie yeah. actually it's been it's not been that long but still like not like like you were saying not to napoleon's that we'll never see another napoleon there's never going to be some bloke from a random island rise up and just conquer europe by himself Na- napoleon also, like, sorry no no i was just going to say like also in he his ability to convince people he is god tier at everything and was very good at at a lot of things is very all-encompassing like i think we have people like it's a really weird analogy i'm just gonna say if it doesn't work we'll cut it but kanye is like the i knew you were gonna say kanye (laughs) no 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 no, you can't want to compare napoleon to kanye let's compare trump to napoleon just a second ago no no because he told people he was great he was g- he very good at one it. thing. He was very, very good at one thing and then said he was great at everything for so long that people... St- and it didn't work because in the end he went mental and everyone realised. But there was about five years where people were like, maybe anything that this man touches will be gold. Like, if he starts a shoe, if he fucking makes a fashion brand, if he releases an album, if he fucking makes a film, if he writes a book, if he writes a play, it will be creatively perfect. But that's in one specific aspect of like just being creative. And even then that fell apart immediately because people just saw straight through it. Like we've had I think people- Napoleon's the opposite though. He genuinely was fucking insane at everything. That's why he his success is actually the opposite reason. Like <laughs> but he was he- so good at war and he was such a brilliant military tactician that any squabble he had, he just went out and won. But that's what I mean, but he was good at war. But he wasn't and- actually was he like, and that's the difficulty thing is like, you know, that's the difficult thing is like the people in power write the history books. Like you just said, he came back from um, Egypt and said it was, he was fucking sick at everything. Like it's difficult to, but that really is a know, skill like, to like how... the proper, like, yeah, the propaganda is a bit of a skill though in those exactly. small bits. But as a ruler, like everyone in France fucking loved him for the most part. And when they exactly, didn't love him, was that just he just propaganda? squashed it out by doing you know policies and declaring himself the emperor and all this kind of stuff and it shows that like when he came back from the first island everyone was like yes napoleon's back like mm. fucking kidding. like everyone was buzzing because they were yeah. like fuck the king. We don't. like we had a revolution for a reason and it was as if it never happened and napoleon comes back and he's like i'm back bitches it, if then you it- can if you compare that to like mussolini like the way he went out was the italians found him and they did some horrific things to him. Yeah, his they life, did not like him. Stuff. Like they, uh, do you mm. know what they did? They, I think it was, they hung up him and some of his like generals in Rome and just like upside down and would just like, people would just go by and just beat the shit out of his, I mean, he was dead at this point. Dead they, body, yeah. Yeah, and his, yeah. his, his, there's pictures of his body and it's fucking mutilated because mm. it's just, and people were loving it because they fucking hated Mussolini. Yeah, well, Napoleon's still revered now. Like he's still considered one of the greatest people to have ever lived now like that his coffin is in this big thing in france i can't remember what it's called yeah, like it's this like big, big dome yeah yeah and like you know people you know his face is fucking everywhere like he reminds he, he, me a lot of like a french genghis khan you know what i mean like he yeah, came, suppose, he, saw, yeah. He, he fucking conquered a lot and was very very good to his people and then mm. 
and still in a lot of ways is revered today. I mean, Genghis Khan, I, I believe, is... I think you probably went on to this when you were talking about it, Sebek. Oh, yeah, the Mongolians fucking love it. The Mongolians fucking yeah. love him, yeah. It's the same as I biggest imagine the French... Biggest statue in the world. I told you about it before. It's fucking yeah. enormous. Yeah, yeah I imagine yeah. the French... Biggest thing you've ever fucking seen. Still love Napoleon, and honestly, I love Napoleon, so I, I fair enough. Yeah. Kind of That's fair. the thing, before right, researching him, I thought it was a bit of a meme. I thought it was like, oh, Napoleon, he was short, and he was like... Mm. I, like my, he was like what he was like in the army or something like I never really thought about him but now I've seen about him I'm like god damn this is one of the most important people in European history like one of he's up there with your like your biggest names in history Hitler ever Hitler, Hitler. as a name like Hitler. Jesus you know Napoleon is in the top 10 <laughs> historical <laughs> figures of all time <laughs> do you know what I mean he's in no he's in the top 10 historical figures I don't of know, he's bigger I don't than know if he is in the top 10 I don't know if he, he is, is for sure really he is. He is for sure. Right. Jesus, Maybe. Muhammad, Hitler. These, these are John not. This isn't John Lennon. <laughs> Nobody's bigger than John Lennon. <laughs> Obama. Obama. No, yeah. not Obama. More people have heard of Obama, right? Gordon now Brown. Than More people have heard no, of Gordon Brown than they've heard of Obama. <laughs> that doesn't mean in history there's right, bigger right, figure. Like Napoleon's right. massive. I, he's not bigger than Jesus. He's not bigger than Muhammad. He's not bigger than Sir Isaac Newton. He's, he is. He's bigger than Sir Isaac Newton. He might be actually. He's definitely not bigger than Hitler. He's definitely not bigger than Hitler. But is that recency bias? No, everyone's people will be talking about Hitler in a thousand years. Hundred percent. People will be talking about people will be talking about Napoleon in a thousand well, years. Right? We're, still, we're still talking about Alexander the Great thousands of years later, and we'll still be talking mm. about Napoleon thousands right, of years yeah, later. Yeah, Plato, Aristotle, they're bigger than Napoleon. Hundred percent. I don't know. Julius Caesar, he's bigger. See, he's getting not. He's. I'd say he's top twenty. I wouldn't say top ten. Well, he's top one, mate. He's the fucking goat. He's not. I need a drink, and then I'm going to come back and spank your ass. No, you won't. <laughs> I look forward to it. <clears throat> right. Yeah, that was fantastic. I haven't got a middle bit, so I think we should just go straight on to whatever the heck uh, you want to talk about, Sebek. I'm very interested in how you're going to follow that up. Wow. No pressure. I want to say, and I'm really annoyed because I knew Vinny was like, I, Vinny was like, do you know who you pitch? Do you know who you pitch? You know you and I was like, no, not yet, not yet. And then he just blurred out, don't be Napoleon. I was like, you fucking bastard, because I uh. already knew that Mork was going to pick Napoleon. I I wanted to be like, that. you don't have to say, because I just knew. I knew. How did you know? Because it's just, I knew the kind of person you'd pick. When you th go the... You dictators, right? We're obviously we're not going to pick Hitler or fucking Stalin. We're obviously not going to do that. We're not going to pick. We either go That's the Kim Jong as a laugh, right? Or you think <laughs> about these like great military leaders. Who's your eye going to be brought to? It's obviously Napoleon, and he's got a film out of the po at the moment. Yeah, it was obvious. It's shit, People apparently. idolize really? power. They idolize powerful not men. Very historically accurate. No, it's not. Yeah, apparently he um, cries a lot, and it makes Napoleon look like a little bitch. Oh, like like historians it. hate it. And then Ridley Scott said something like, "He said like get over it or something." And his response he was to like, the he was saying like, they hated it. Someone said the French hate it, and then the, he said the French hate everything, including themselves. Um, yeah. And then He's some not, other journalist watch it. <laughs> some other journalist asked about it, and he said, "Were you there? No. Well, fuck off then." <laughs> Which again, I just think's a bit like, oh, come on, yeah. Man. Anyway, look, Funny. let me get back to my point. Okay, okay. People idolize power. They idolize powerful men. They idolize people who will sacrifice anything to win and seize power. And yeah, everyone gets a right war boner about Napoleon and even Hitler. Like Hitler, fucking, he, he saw what he wanted. He took it. And like, there's a That's little a bit of people. I, I'm just gonna say I don't, I don't agree with that statement. <laughs> yeah, I don't idolize right, Hitler. Maybe, not idolize, but people are fascinated by it. People are. He's they, interesting. Yeah. I think people, and I, don't, I don't think idolize, but people are. People are fascinated with these guys that can do that much yeah. stuff. These big the, people who influence a lot of history. Yeah, highly yeah. influential. Like, how can you invade all these places? Like, we can't really comprehend it. It's exactly. mad to us. Like, Hitler just goes, like, I want a bit of Poland. I'm going to fucking have it. That's it. You know? Yeah. People find the... And I do think, like, even, even with Hitler, people often separate the kind of war bit from the really dark Holocaust bit. Because they enjoy talking about how he marched into Paris in two days. People were mm. fucking obsessed with that. And there was this like, military contest. Mm. This military conquest. Anyway, mm. look. 
But that image we have of a dictator is not the origin of the term dictator. It's not actually what dictator means, and it's not actually what it meant when it was first created. Mm. A dictator did not start as a vicious, autocratic leader who seized power through force and then held onto it through violence and brainwashing. The term dictator came to me is the term dictator simply means someone who rules over a nation with absolute power that's all that's what it's became it was someone that's what it started out as it's someone who ruled with absolute power Mm -hmm. and this was coined in as i'm sure you're all aware ancient rome the romans they they coined term dictator and you'll forgive me for paraphrasing because it's a subject that thousands of people have de- have dedicated millions of hours to understanding. I'm a simple man. I shall put it simply. <laughs> a dictator was someone who was chosen by the Roman consuls to take absolute control over the empire in a time of crisis. And actually what's really interesting is that is how a lot of dictators come to power even now. You know, Napoleon came to power in a time of crisis during the mm. revolution. Hitler came to power. He wasn't appointed in a time of crisis. Well, he sort of appointed himself, but again, that was only made possible because of the crisis. I'd say Hitler is probably more uh, of an obvious example. He was democratically elected in a time of crisis. Uh, Yeah, he's the chancellor. He was elected as a chancellor and then kind of, yeah, bullied his way to the... But he also bullied his way to chancellor. Uh, But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, but this is like, it's it's a common thread of people. They get themselves there relatively soundly and Mm. then they hold on to the power through more vicious means yeah like Ro- robert That's mugabe it. robert mugabe, mugabe was elected democratically as mm. like we want you to lead this new country and then he was like right i've got all this power hmm and then now i'm gonna rig every election so i keep yeah. it yeah. Exactly. yeah exactly exactly and the idea of this before it became that the idea of just having this one person to have absolute power was that in a time of crisis you don't need the slow turning the constant bickering cogs of democracy you need someone with absolute will who can just everyone backs them we all pull in the same direction and we do what we need to do to get out of this crisis i think a good example of this even though he wasn't a dictator would be churchill for for england during the war for great britain during the war you can say what you want i know there's a lot of debate about his legacy what kind of man he was i'm Mm. sure there's a lot of stuff he said and believed that wasn't good but he was the perfect person to get England through that war. He was he great was for tough. England. He was great not, for the great for Britain. Not for the Indians. <laughs> not for the, no, not at all. A terrible <laughs> no, guy. But great for but the he was English. Tough. Yeah. He was charismatic, and he he knew he was right with absolute certainty, and that is what we needed in that moment. And the same thing goes for this idea of a dictator. They picked someone who they were like, it's a steady pair of hands. We trust that what they say will be the right thing for Rome. And we cannot have the squabbling of the Senate and the consuls to hold us back in this time of crisis. We just need to, we need action. Mm. And obviously, you're all thinking, oh, there's only one famous Roman ruler, the only famous dictator ever, Julius Caesar. Mm. He was the ultimate elected populist who consolidated his power to become an absolute ruler, right up until he declared himself dictator perpetuo, or dictator forever, right before he was killed by his own senate and replaced. Mm. Uh, so I didn't pick him because that didn't go very well. You know, the moment he became officially a dictator for life, which is our modern interpretation of a dictator, he was fucked. I'm so <laughs> sad you didn't pick him, but carry on. Really? Yeah, I was, I was like, oh my god, Napoleon versus Julius Caesar. Now this is what I want to sink my teeth into. Now, it's <laughs> nah, gonna be like I'm Napoleon fine. versus fucking some or like Augustus or something like. I don't fucking care about Augustus. No, not Caesar. Augustus. Um, <laughs> no, not Augustus. Uh, Augustus. And I do, I like, I like Caesar, but I would argue that a lot of the change he created was not actually when he reached his pinnacle of being in absolute power. He actually got there quite cleverly by making a lot of populist decisions that benefited people in the moment. And then when he got there, he was like, "I'm not fucking letting go," and then mm. he got killed. I thought, um, I thought he rose to power by just being good at. Like, like Napoleon, just being good at war and winning a lot of wars, and so people were like, oh, this guy's great. We love this guy. He's winning a lot of wars. 
He did win a lot of awards. I could be wrong. I listened to it a long time ago. I listened to like a three-part documentary on like everything you need to know about the death of Caesar. Mm. And I believe he also did some of the more classic modern timesy things of just being like, let's cut all the tax and like give out money. Like just like the stuff mm. that like whips a public into a frenzy so that when you start saying things like, I'm going to be dictator perpetuity, I will tell People, People are like, well, it's free money for life. Right. Yeah. What well, could go fine. wrong? You know? Yeah. Um, it's amazing how, not... like, just being good at war can get you so far in life. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's how you used to you win over that. the masses, yeah. <laughs> it's really funny, because I'm really arguing about, like, people not needing to be good at war, but the guy I picked is fucking sick at war. That was his whole thing. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so his name was Quintus Fabius Verosius. Oh, no, Quintus... Oh, yeah, hang on. Quintus Fabius <laughs> Someone Maximus you can't even pronounce. Ferocious. I just need to double check because I don't want to be saying his name wrong. Um, <laughs> wow, what's the name? Quintus Fabius oh, Maximus Ferocious? Vero- yes. So anyway, look. It's Quint- We're just going to call him Fabius. That's what everyone calls him. He's a fucking okay. big name. Okay. Fabius or Fabius the Delayer father of fabian strategy a strategy that is still used to this day who is he well it's roman history bit shabby around the edges we don't know that much about him in his early life born in 280 bc he was described as a bit meek a bit timid he was slow in his speech um didn't like to join in sports with his fellow youths um but he actually turned out to be a bit of an ugly duckling. When he was a kid, his nickname was 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 Wart because he had a wart on his face. His own family, his third name, his Roman third name was like the equivalent of like Warty because everyone had the same name and he was the one with the wart. So they just called him like the Warty one. I was going to say... A little uggo. I was going to say you haven't um, um, painted this guy in glory just yet. Well, <laughs> it's because all time. bit ugly. He was called Wart. bit ugly. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. He turned out to be a bit of an ugly duckling because as he got older, his slow speech, his quiet manner, his reserved demeanor stopped being this sign of weakness and became a sign of intelligence, of forethought. He thought before he spoke. Not someone Michael would idolize. And eventually, ah. razzed, mate. <laughs> Not Um, true. He was eventually given the very prestigious job of censor, aka the bloke who dealt with the census, one of Rome's crowning achievements. Go around. How old are you? Where do you live? What do you do? Oh, yeah. Fucking censor's brilliant. And then... It's good, though. No one cares. (laughs) There was a crisis. I love a census. Everyone loves a census. Like, I love one of the census. founding parts of our society. Censuses are super important. Yeah, very important. What the fuck you chat? I just, get, I just ignore it when it comes in. Great. <laughs> Good stuff. It's just like where the government tracking you and shit, in it. Oh, yeah, you're right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. Wake up, sheeple. Right. Exactly. Anyway, look, there was a crisis, and that crisis was Hannibal, the great Carthaginian. C- Cathinian, Cathinian, Cathinian general. No, that's where that name comes from. He's called Hannibal. He's a basically he was a military master. Look, you not heard of Hannibal? Hannibal Buress? No, no. Oh, crazy! He's He's like, like, yeah, he fucking nuts. nuts. He's like, he's literally like the roughest, nuttiest military mastermind there ever has been, and the Romans just. Couldn't fucking wrap their head around him. He was basically like the what one happened guy was, who gave the Romans a lot of trouble. Yes. Mm. And basically what happened was Hannibal, the Romans, had got where they got because they had the most well-disciplined, tough and vicious armies, the f- toughest soldiers in Europe. Mm. And Hannibal turned up and his blokes were rougher and tougher and more fucking well-disciplined. And the Romans just kept getting into scraps and they kept losing. And the Carthaginians would go, let's have a fucking scrap. And the Romans would say, all right, then, let's fucking go. And they'd go charging in, and they just get slaughtered every time. And Fabius is now part of, like, the Senate. He's climbed his way up the greasy pole. And every time, he's, like, at the back going, like, no, 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 lads. Stop running in. Let the ball come to you. Hit him on the counter. <laughs> he's, like, military Jose. First priority, <laughs> don't get dicked. And then dick him when you have the chance. But mm. just don't get dicked. 
first step, don't get dick. Yeah. And everyone's important. like, mate, you're such a fucking pussy. Like, we, it's our thing. We're Romans. We run in, we fuck him up. And he's like, yeah, but it, it's not working, is it? And everyone's like, oh, fuck you, mate. But eventually it keeps going. And they literally, they just keep losing. And Hannibal's taking more and more ground. And he's like becoming like this, this figure that looks like he's going to like topple Rome. Mm, and again, like, what if he actually gets to thing. Rome? <laughs> this can be fucking terrifying. You, yeah. You should look into Hannibal Mork. I think you'd, I think you'd find you'd, him interesting. Yeah, you'd love him. Um, but what happens in a crisis? Hitler. They need a dictator. Hitler. But an elected dictator. <laughs> They, they pick Hitler. someone to have absolute rule <laughs> in this moment of crisis. So and who do they pick? 1930s Germany. <laughs> Weimar Republic are not doing well. It was always going to happen. It was always going to happen in this episode with Seb. I'm not picking Hitler. <laughs> right. I would be so mm. happy if you... I'll know we're halfway through. I picked Hitler, by the way. I don't know what I'm talking about, Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Like you with um, Sorry. fucking Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And you guys still thought I'd pick Joe Rogan by the end of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it well, right. Well, back to Roman Hitler, but without the Jew stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Look, so they're in a crisis. Mm -hmm. they, the Senate decide we need a dictator, someone to take control of the situation, rule with absolute certainty, absolute power. Who do they pick? Oh, fucking Fabius. He's been saying, don't go charging him. Maybe we give him a shot. Um, is that how long I've got left or how long I've had? Left. Oh, God, I got longer than I thought. Um, and Fabius, he's a fucking genius. Now, he does get a bit of a... He gets a... There's a thorn in his side, which his second in command, even though he, everyone has to do what he says, if he says it, it has to happen. He still has, like, people around him. And his second in command is this guy called Minicius, like your fucking Minicius ligament. And he's such a fucking knob. He's like the exact opposite. They were they were political rivals. It's like good cop, bad cop. Fucking Fabius is like the old guy. He's like one week off retirement. He just wants to fucking see everything through. And then Minicius is like, man, I just want to crack this case running, guns blazing, be fucking sick. And he's like, shut the fuck up. Anyway, Fabius, he does some really clever things. So the first thing he does is he's like, right, what the Roman people need is a legitimate dictator, someone who is absolutely in charge. I have absolute power. I am authority incarnate. So mm -hmm. he gets all of the other leaders to come to him and they all have like, these like bands of men who like go around with him, their little personal bodyguards. And he's like, right, in front of me, tell your personal bodyguards to leave. You are just men now. You don't have your personal bodyguard. You don't have anything. You are my subordinates. So they all go, and then he takes those men and puts them in his own bodyguard. So he's like, I am in charge. You're <laughs> fucked. Don't fuck with me. Sneaky and the like next it. problem he has is that there's this... He's like, right, look, there's this rumor going around that the gods are fuming because we keep losing all these fights. And so he makes this big public thing, and he's like, look, I've consulted some oracles, and it turns out the gods are fuming. They are, really are annoyed. Mm. But, good news, we can appease them. And he comes up with these quite difficult things. They're not easy, but it's like give one third of your cattle to the to to the temple. Give a third of your money. It's all this stuff about threes. It's like all really symbolic. And he's like, but if we do that, the gods are going to be back on our side. And that sounds like weird because it's like you're making them jump through hoops. But actually, the Roman people suddenly believed, well, we can get the gods back on our side. And so the morale of Rome and the Roman army and the Roman people is boosted because they believe that the gods are back on their side. And that is really, really clever because he's using like, he, he's, he's picking specific problems and dealing with them. But obviously the real big problem is Hannibal. Mm. Now, obviously, Vinny, you already know about Hannibal. He's a really vicious fucker. And Fabius finally has his chance to conduct his genius his fabian strategy aka art the bus and what he works out is that hannibal <laughs> despite being on the offensive he's actually at a disadvantage because he has to take land and resources as he goes he, he doesn't have it on him it's he's not in his own back garden he has to try and take land and crops and cattle as he's going Mm. So Fabius is like, right, what about 
if we just let him burn himself out, right? So he tells all of his public, get inside the nearest walled city, take everything you can with you, and what you can't carry, kill and burn. So if you've got cattle, crops, anything. Kids. Just, kids. Kill it and burn it. <laughs> Don't leave anything behind. Don't leave him anything that he can use. And that's this idea of scorched earth. It's like a scorched earth theory. It's this idea yeah. of just like, if you can't have it, no one can. That's what I, the Russians did too, Napoleon. I was about to say, I, I, I thought you would talk about that, but yeah, that's what the Russians did to Napoleon. It's what yeah. the Russians then yeah. also did to Hitler. To yeah. Hitler. As everyone knows, Wait, it's don't, winter to come. don't invade Russia because they will burn the shit out of Russia and you'll have nothing to invade. <laughs> Well, yeah, and the no winter, point. that's the problem as well. Is yeah. they, the Russians can just like, well, we'll just wait till winter and you guys all freeze to death. Yeah, yeah. it's like, what can you do against that? Not really yeah. much. Um, yeah. So yeah, and it, and it, and it <clears throat> is really clever. And basically then what he does, so then he leaves kind of, he basically just like cuts off the bit that Hannibal's in, gets everyone out of it, burns everything that's in it, and then just Hannibal's on one side of a big mountain range and he just puts all his troops at the top of the mountain range and then just says, wait, don't go down. Don't engage with him. Mm. Just just let him run about because he can't do anything where he is. He either has to go back to where he started, go home, or try and fight us uphill, up mountains. Wasn't, you, he, you can't, wasn't there like a big thing, like a big part of Hannibal's army and why they scared the shit out of the Romans as he used war elephants, which was like, for the time... Everyone's oh like, yeah! Yeah, the Romans are like, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. <laughs> war elephants, that's war mad. elephants, and that's why the Romans were fucking. It, it destroys like you know legionnaires left, right, and center. But war ele elephants aren't very good at climbing mountains, so they were like, well, "Let's exactly. just go on the mountains." They can't get. Mm. They can't get us, and it's like, yeah, they can't. <laughs> and literally, and that is Fabian, um, Fabian strategy. What it is, this idea. He basically's like. Hannibal can't get into walled cities because he doesn't have siege stuff because he's fucking miles away from home. Hmm. He can't get up the mountains because he's on fucking elephant back. So <laughs> that's not happening. So just let him burn himself out. And if he tries to come at us, we pick him off. And it starts working. It starts really working because basically Hannibal, he then starts to like panic because he doesn't want to lose all his men. So he starts sending up <coughs> raiding parties to try and take stuff away from the Romans, to try and get supplies, they're just getting killed because they're running uphill at mm. Roman legionnaires. It's not working out. And he starts to pick them off. But what fucking happens? Fucking Minicius sticks his head up and he's like, right, guys. He goes back to Rome and he starts spreading a rumour. He's like, Fabius is a pussy, mate. Fucking Hannibal's running about on our land and we're not doing anything about it. We we need to go and we need to tackle him head on. And then people start getting more enraged because by the end of it, Hannibal's in quite a a vulnerable position because of Fabian's strategy. Mm. He's mm. like worn him down to the point where, and they're like, we could probably take him. And Fabius is like, no, nope, just leave him. Just fucking leave him. Just make him go away. It's like having a wasp in the car. Just mm. try and get it out because it's more of a problem than we can dedicate. Like is it worth losing an army for or do we just make him go away mm. yeah and 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 and, and, and Minicius is back in like the senate being like he's a fucking pussy mate he's a fucking pussy <laughs> what does fucking fabius <laughs> do what does he do fabius is a genius hmm. he goes all right then you can have half the army i'll have my half and i'm going to stick up in the mountains and you do what you want with your half of the army what does Minicius do? He's like, all right, then, yeah, I'm going to be fucking Johnny Big Bollocks. And he thinks, well, now Fabius has worn Hannibal down. I'll go in, kill him, take all the credit. Mm. So he launches a classic battle. He literally says, 1v1, we rust. He says, Hannibal, you meet me over there. We'll just face off and have a big fight. And he's thinking, Hannibal's been sat here with no food or water for three fucking years or whatever. I'm going to wreck him. What happens? Hannibal fucking slaughters him. <laughs> because it's the same problem he's still hannibal he's still hannibal's army and fabius is right and what does fabius do he comes in and saves him he saves the day hannibal is then pushed back and because fabius has shown himself to be a, a sound military leader when he turns around and says right he's 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 retreated temporarily we're not going to win this get back up in the fucking mountains they actually do it so they all go back up in the mountains 
And then, and, and Hannibal, he starts to look a bit shaky like. He's like, fuck, I, I don't know if I've got this. So he starts to look like he might go back to where he is that I can't pronounce. Carthagen. Carthagen. Carthagen, yeah. Carthagen, whatever. Carthinian. Carthinian. Carthinians Carthinian. are from Carthagen, I'm pretty sure. And basically, at this point, everyone goes, look, it looks like Fabius is on something. So they start doing it his way. And Fabian, Fabius says, I'm handing him my notice. I'm not dictator anymore. He's like Nanny McPhee. He's like, my work is done. I taught you the way to defeat this enemy. I've taught you my Fabian theory. I no longer want my absolute power. You don't have to do everything I say. He gives his power back. What's the first thing that happens? Two fucking generals turn up and they shout. They literally, Hannibal's like leaving and they're like, Oi, mate! Fucking 1v1 me! And they <laughs> fucking try and have a fight with him and they lose. Even though Hannibal's on the way out. They try and have another fight with him on the way out and Hannibal. lose again. Right, right, yeah, mm? right. Sorry, yeah, yeah And then And they come back and they're like fucking tail between their legs. And Fabius is like, and they're like, Fabius, give us your wisdom. And he leans in and he's like, park the bus. <laughs> this is football heritage. He's like, fucking park the bus. Just let <laughs> them wear themselves out. Hit them on the counter. And Hannibal... Once they actually fucking start doing that, again, the two new blokes are like, all right, we'll fucking do what he said. He's still, even not as dictator, implementing his genius military strategy. Hannibal then finally fucks off for good. And the closest thing that would topple the Roman Empire is seen off. Not by being reckless and Napoleon-like and charging in and waving your dick about, putting your own crown on your own head, but by being the not epitome... <laughs> By being the epitome of a good Listen. dictator. He ruled with absolute conviction. He knew what was right. He knew exactly what he needed to do. And he did it. He held absolute power. He held with an iron fist. He told all his generals to disband their men. They're my men now. You're fucked. But then he did what was right. He defeated Hannibal. And then he took the crown off and gave it back. Well, he didn't defeat him. Well, he did. His, his tactics <clears throat> defeated him. He just cowered into a little ball in a mountain until he go, go, went away. <laughs> you are saying it's the greatest dictator of all time is a bloke who didn't actually kick the shit out of anybody and told everyone to give free cows to the gods or something that don't even exist. <laughs> but but it worked. <laughs> yeah, he took on, but he took on the most one of the most dangerous military minds in history and defeated mm. him through intelligence and through strategy mm. and Fabian strategy is still used today It's the exact strategy that the Vietnam, the North Vietnamese used against the Americans. It's exactly that. It's Real the far. idea. Of, yeah. Effectively it's holding. If you look up Fabian strategy and the most like recent things, the Viet Cong are considered to have used Fabian strategy. This idea of mm. it's your ground. You pick your battles when you need them and allow the enemy to wear itself out. You know, think about fucking America napalming whole forests and chucking all their dicks about, and then they just wait and wait and wait until they can just push them away, let them burn themselves out, because you have faith that you can just sit on your high ground and just watch them. Yeah, I'm probably the, American, that American. the Americans got fucked. Well, yeah. even because, even like, like we were saying, the Peninsula War... That was yeah. a little warfare, if anything, I believe. Get and, and Napoleon had a pretty terrible time there because it's guerrilla warfare, which is really, really, really difficult to fight against. Mm. He and, was like, yeah. he was the first, again, it's difficult because like Mork said, like you can't say he's the first guy in history because warfare is, but, but he was like the first guy in Roman history to say, what if we don't just meet in a big line and charge at each other? Let's yeah, like, yeah. Let's just let... To change something up. Just just wait. Mm. It's called Fabian Strategy, and it's genius. I fucking love it. Interesting. Biding your time, holding your high ground, not being drawn in. And Hannibal would do crazy shit. Like, he'd, like, really antagonise them and be like, I'm going to fucking burn this village down. And he'd be like, all right. Cool. But you're down Hannibal sounds pretty cool, actually. You should have picked him. <laughs> well, he's not a dictator. He's a general. Yeah... He was never a lead. He didn't lead his country. He just led. Oh, army. really? He was just a general. Okay. Yeah. Because I did the, the same thing when I first started hearing about this geezer. I was like, maybe I'll just pick Hannibal. He sounds way cooler. But uh, yeah. yeah. 
the oh, sec- it was second an addiction, Punic, yeah. Second Punic War. Mm. Yeah, I actually watched a vi- really good video on the Second Punic War quite recently, which is probably why I sort of knew bits and pieces like the the war elephants couldn't go up a mountain. That's why they just yeah. stayed in the mountains. Ah, it's like, right. What the fuck are they going to do with that? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. Well, yeah. Quintus, Fabius, Maximus, Verissius. The greatest Fella dictator no of all one's time. ever heard of or can pronounce their name versus... Well, I've heard of him. Napoleon. <laughs> I've heard of him. And Sebek just pronounced his name. I can't pronounce Nap. Naporium? Napoleon? Napoleon? Napoleon Bonerhead, what? Then <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the British used to call him the Bony Man and he didn't like it. <laughs> really? I think so. <laughs> That's funny. It's one of the greatest military minds in history versus Vaporian Boneface. <laughs> no, Napoleon is one of the greatest military minds in history. <laughs> no, he's uh, just a savage. He's not a savage. He's not a savage. He's the opposite yeah, of a savage. He's straight savage. You know what I'm saying? No, he, like, made his men live off the land. He paid them well. He, like, created modern armies, as they are now. Yeah, I... The Grande Army, or whatever it was called, is, like, one of the most feared and revered armies in history. The French army of the time is probably one of the greatest armies ever assembled. I... So, I will say, the whole Fabian strategy thing, I think, is fantastic. I I really like that. Um, The fact that like you i mean i i know for, i just know through like i through what i mean watching videos on the punic wars that hannibal was an absolute fucking shit up romans are like romans uh romans ass like they really were terrified of hannibal like hannibal was to europe what like you know hannibal was to rome what uh, genghis khan was to europe or the poem right, yeah. was to europe kind of thing like he was fucking terrifying and they were like yep this this probably be the end of things until you just hide in the mountains. <laughs> it works. It absolutely yeah. works. A tree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No. I, I I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. Um. Uh. But. Oh, I fuck mean, off. <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> I love Napoleon so much, dude. <laughs> Napoleon's so sick. I just think this. He just kind of did everything. Like he not only was just such an incredible, brilliant tactician, and he won he 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 didn't get it from nepotism. He 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 earned it yeah. through just raw, just it, talent, ambition, and, and amb- ambition, and just mm. struggle. He earned it by himself, for himself, and became the fucking emperor of France. It's yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that's the insane. maddest thing is like, you know, like Caesar and Alexander the Great and all these people. Like Alexander the Great, they were saying he was like actually descended from like God himself or all of this yeah. stuff, you know, like, it's like well, there's Napoleon that- is literally a little gremlin born on an island. Yeah, yeah. He's technically Speaking- not even French. He's Corsican. <laughs> Speaking and of he was um- just like. Right, I'm the emperor now. Yeah, yeah. It was like barely French. It was like yeah. legally just about French at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking about yeah. speaking about Alexander the Great, there's actually a, uh, an interesting anecdote. Which, I mean, you know, it's very, very old, and you know, who knows if the sources are lying or whatever. But there's there's the story that Julius Caesar, I think, went to Macedonia, where there was like a statue of. Uh, Alexander the Great and he basically like bowed before him and like fell to his knees and started weeping and said like I could not accomplish a, a, a fraction of what this man accomplished mm. and it's like mm. Julius fucking Caesar said that about Alexander the Great that just shows how revered that man was like it's mm. insane what he did before he died at like 33 or something like yeah it like the, the, there's literally there's like Hundreds of cities named Alexandria after Alexander the Great. Yeah, like, true. Just yeah. took them over and was like, yep, you're now called Alexandria now. I smell. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I loved, I loved, I loved this whole Fabian stuff. Fabian, Fabian will be with my dreams. I'll be in the mountains with him laughing at those war elephants. But I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to hand the greatest dictator of all time to Napoleon Bonaparte. But or as I've just found out, they did. So the British people did call him Boney and Bogey and Bogeyman because it was when they were terrified that he was going to invade Britain. Yeah, that they spread all this. Um, and he's the Bogeyman. He's the he. Yeah, they were calling him the Bogeyman. He's basically the devil, and they because they were trying to get like British 
support to like fight back at him and they were mm. actually just fucking basically terrified that he would invade britain and he nearly did but he's he's like every time anybody ever tries to invade britain the british navy just are too good especially at that time yeah yeah Island much. nation in it like lord place. nelson and stuff like that were kicking about then which also happened to Japan a couple times. I think the Koreans or something tried to invade Japan twice, and both times was during a massive storm, like a ty- ty- typhoon or something. Yeah, like, right. It just destroyed all their ships, and both. And because of that, the Japanese were like they incorporated incorporated that into their mythology, and they thought it was like their gods doing mm. that for them, being like, "This is like a sign that we are like God's chosen people," because no one can conquer us, and it's because yeah, there's a lot of sea between them and. Uh, like mainland like China or Korea yeah trying to conquer island nations is difficult it's why we've got such a good air force tricky. now like we're an yeah, island it's tricky. we have to fly yeah. mm. you know we have to fly we have to sail yeah yeah I'm very happy with winning with Napoleon because like I said I didn't know fuck all about him until a few days ago and now I absolutely love him like he's easily one of the most fascinating and like interesting historical figures I've you're gonna ever. read all his diaries he's got like all his diaries are published aren't they you can read them all Sorry, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I want to ingest as much Napoleon as possible. It's just a shame that apparently, yeah, the Ridley Scott movie turns him into like a little bitch, where like he's all high and mighty, and then he goes back to his wife, and he's like crying, like, oh. mm. and um, yeah, people are pretty pissed off about that film, and the uh, the battles aren't very historically accurate either, and all this kind of stuff, and it's like, uh. I was really hyped for that film as well. Now you've just completely ruined it for me. It, he's only <laughs> got like a six. It's got a six point something on IMDb and critics. Really? Aren't, critics aren't wild about it and there's just loads of shit that's made i don't mind making stuff up but like he was just like firing cannons at like the pyramids for like no reason and stuff oh, yeah there's a, weird. there was a rumor wasn't there he there's blew been a the rumor for a long the, time of the, sp- the sphinx right he blew the nose off the sphinx and he blew the top off the big pyramid he didn't it's not true it, no it's not true yeah it's not true no yeah so yeah, it was like um, but yeah stuff like that people were just like oh yeah apparently the movie's not very good but apparently there are some other good napoleon that movies out there okay. there was a good three-part series from 2002 or something i don't know but okay. yeah big fan of Nap- i love napoleon now he's a fucking uh, warmongering madman it's a difficult challenge to beat napoleon but i do think fabian theory is very interesting fabian strategy yeah. no yeah and, uh, very interesting. he was good a really bit. interesting guy and i like the idea of like you know he held absolute power and he just gave it back he was and just he's, like i don't need it anymore and he stopped hannibal yeah. Fucking stop Hannibal. Hannibal, man. Who the fuck stopped yeah. Hannibal? He didn't have the balls. He didn't have balls as big as Napoleon, though, really, let's be honest. Well, he did well, he in his arrogant. own way. Because but the, the, the putting the crown on his own head <laughs> yeah, that's in front funny. of the Pope. <laughs> he invited the Pope to Notre Dame and was like, <laughs> I'm going to do it myself. Or, or, or the Emperor. <laughs> I think that's, that's so like, funny. <laughs> yeah. That's arrogant. Whereas I yeah. think just, yeah. just holding yourself and like holding your nerve while the whole senate calls you a pussy but you oh. know that you're in the right oh, so and you, nice to be nice isn't it oh, well he wasn't Italian nice I mean, he, was a very, he was a very like vicious vicious military leader he just knew when to like hold and when to go yeah true true mm. there we go that was an interesting one because that like like we were saying when we write down goat dictator it's like oh shit is it just going to be like fucking Seb talking about Hitler for three hours, but I feel like it was a very well informed conversation. I literally, me and yeah. Luce were talking about it, and I was like, um, I was like, I'm thinking about doing Gaddafi, and she just went, Nope, don't do Gaddafi. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do Gaddafi. Gaddafi why? <laughs> <laughs> just, he got a lot done. He was very liberal. But he cut his head off. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but he was very liberal for his time. But yeah, I think we should end the show, wrap it all up. Yeah, true. Wrap it up. That was Go Dictator. Thanks so much for watching, uh, all three of you that have uh, stuck around this long. Um, like I said before, five-star review would be fantastic. Instagram at the underscore goat underscore pod. We also have a Patreon. And without further ado, I love you, bye. Peace. Love you, bye. You got to say love you, bye. Oh, love you, bye. Sorry. Better. What's happened to me? Better. You started the whole thing. I know, I've got really.